Hey gang, thought we'd start today with a quick tutorial on creating virtual machines in Windows Server 2012 R2. Now to begin with, you're going to need to have Hyper-V installed as a role or feature. So we launch the Add Roles and Features wizard from Server Manager. Next, next, make sure you've selected the local server if you're managing more than one. And then you're going to add a check mark to Hyper-V. I've already done so, so we can see that's already in place. Uh, two key things, it's going to ask you about uh, which of your network cards you'd like to make into a switch. Don't panic. You won't lose your IP address. You'll still be able to connect to it. It's going to take your regular IP address and make that a virtual network card. Take your physical network card and make it into a switch and then plug your virtual network card into your physical network card and you're ready to go. So don't worry about that. Second thing, it's going to reboot. I've already done that. So now, after the reboot, I can come over here to Hyper-V Manager. In Hyper-V Manager, we're ready to manage the local machine and create a new server. So I'm installing Server 2012 R2 on top of Server 2012 R2 to have a virtualized environment to install custom configurations and software. Notice we can create new virtual machines, disks and floppy disks. Might come back here to create a, uh, a hard disk to add a second or a third virtual hard drive to a specific machine. Uh, notice down here the virtual switch manager. If I want to create a sandbox, what's known as a private switch, I can do that in here as well. So it'll just ask you to give it a name and then suddenly that becomes a switch that if you plug machines into it, they'll be able to talk to each other but not to any other machines. So I'm going to just start here creating a new virtual machine can't go wrong, click next. Then it says, what do you want to call this bad boy? So we're going to call this HAL 9000. I don't know why, seems like a good name. Where am I going to store it? Well, I've got a default location here. You don't really want to co-locate it with the operating system, so separate that out. This is going to be the location of the configuration files, and if you save the virtual machine, it's kind of like hibernation, it'll freeze it and take everything in memory and dump it into a file. It's going to go right here in this path. Then what generation would I like to use? In Windows Server 2012 R2, we can choose generation 1 or 2. If my guest operating system is Server 2012 R2 or Windows 8.1, I'm definitely going to choose generation 2 as long as I don't need to export it and uh, bring it into a legacy hosting environment, like take it over to Windows uh, 2008 R2 to host the machine. So I'm good there with generation 2 in this example. How much RAM? I'm going to give this 2048 of the 6 gigs of available memory, but I'm going to use dynamic memory, which means it'll boot with 2 gigs, but has the ability to grab a little more if it needs it, or to give a little bit up if it doesn't need it. How cool is that? Then, what about the network? We need to plug it into a switch. It's going to get a virtual network card automatically. What switch will we plug it into? I told you when we first install Hyper-V, one of my network cards gets bound as a switch to provide access to virtual machines and to itself to get out to the physical network. So that's what I've labeled here as external. Or I mentioned you could use the new switch wizard, create a private switch, and give it a, a name that you recognize. So this would put it in the kind of a safe sandbox, which potentially won't have internet access, but could reach all the other machines that share that same connection. What about putting it onto a uh, onto a disk, right? We need a physical hard drive. The good news is that the defaults typically work really well. It's using a VHDX dynamically expanding hard disk. That is a higher performing disk than the old VHDs of previous operating systems. The VHDX is very nice. So I actually like this as a default. Uh, you really just want to make sure that the core operating system disk that you're starting off with is the right size. Remember, I can add additional virtual hard disks to separate out things like uh, where I'm storing my databases or file stores or things of that nature. Uh, and we can do that after the fact. I'll go ahead and click Next with the defaults in place here. How about an operating system? Virtual machines are more fun with an OS. Hopefully your OS is available to you in an ISO file format because you, uh, with Generation 2 machines, we cannot connect them to the physical DVD drive. Uh, so if I've got an ISO or if I have it stored on the network using something like a ghost server uh, or a Windows uh, image server, then I can provide that functionality. I'm going to use a local ISO file in this case for 2012R2. Now when I click Finish, it's going to create the configuration file and the shell of the hard drive that will be used for storing the operating system. Now if I double click on HAL 9000, it creates a connection window. So this is how I'm going to connect to this machine. Even if it doesn't have an IP address or if it's in that sandbox environment, I can always get to it by way of this virtual machine connection. 
So I can fire it up with the start right here, and that's just booting that system. And again, it's recognizing that mounted ISO file is a DVD, so I press spacebar and it's ready to uh, bring that boot screen up. And from this point, gang, it's just kind of like working with a physical machine. I mean, what do I do next? You follow the installation instructions, right? When in doubt, click Next, click Install. Uh, it'll ask me for a key here, so on and so forth. It'll go through reboots. It'll ask you for the password of the default administrator to let you log on, just like you did to get to the physical environment. So at this point, gang, something to note, if I close the window, that's just closing my interface with it. You'll notice it even shows me down here. It's uh, still running. If I go to memory, we can see it's got allocated memory. Uh, networking shows the association there. Uh, so again, it is also up here, running. Not busy with the processor right now, and it's been up for a little less than a minute. So if I want to shut it down, I'll do that inside the operating system, or as a shortcut, once an operating system is installed, I will have the ability to shut it down. This is a great uh, tool that's available to us based upon what are known as the, um, the Hyper-V. Um, you can see the option actually in here. The integration services. And the good news is Windows Server 2012 and Windows 8 and even a couple of generations of previous OSs come with integration services that allow for things like being able to shut them down remotely through this tool. Uh, you also can turn off. Be aware that's pulling the power plug. That is the, that's a harsh way to do that, so we try and avoid that. Save is like hibernating, and that's just going to take what's in memory, dump it down to a text, or dump it down to a memory file that's saved on the hard drive, and then when I try and start it, uh, once that is done saving, then like hibernation, it'll just come back to right where it was, loading it back in place, loading everything that was in memory back on screen for us. So that's a great option if you just need to kind of put things on hold for the night and come back the next day while you shut down the system. Well, hopefully that gives you all a head start on building a virtual machine, and if you have any questions, go ahead and toss them my way.